and welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're making a soap using this fragrance from Bee Scented. It's called Winter Woods. Oh, this smells really, really nice. It is a bath and body dupe. Let me, I got my computer down here. Let me read to you the scent description. Uh, Winter Woods is a musky sweet vanilla with woodsy under notes that reminds us of winter morning at the cabin in the trees. Doesn't that sound, the description's nice. So it has top notes of cedar wood, middle notes of cashmere and musk, and bottom notes of vanilla bean and sandalwood. Doesn't that sound heavenly? <laughs> that just, wow. Um, and that's what it smells like, which is fabulous. It doesn't have any vanillin, uh, but it says it discolors to a little bit of a tan color. So I am gonna be using a little titanium dioxide in the uncolored portion and for the color swirls. I'm gonna do a combination of, I'm thinking winter woods, so birch trees, no leaves on the trees, you know, just bark. So I'm gonna use some activated charcoal for part of a color swirl. And then like winter berries that you'll see dispersed through the woods, I wanna do just a little touch of trial by fire for a pop of red in there. I just thought it would be really, you know how in the middle of winter time, I grew up in Wisconsin and we have the uh, conifer trees which stay green all the time, but a lot of birch trees, poplar, aspen, and they lose their leaves. So it's very stark looking, but it's a beautiful, it's a beauty in that starkness because you know new life's coming in the spring. Anyway, I'm waxing on here about <laughs> winter woods, but this scent really evokes just a warm sort of it's just a nice scent. So that's what we're going for. Those are the colors. This will be a goat milk soap. So I will do the milk and oil method like I do, and I'll talk about it as we go through it. So let me get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some winter woods soap. All right, it is soap additives time. And uh, before I get into that, I wanna show you what I harvested. Aren't those adorable? I found a couple, I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to work these in. So <laughs> they are a non-soapy item, but look at these adorable little pine cones. So each bar is gonna get a tiny, teeny tiny little pine cone on it, just because I really thought it went with the winter woods theme. So there they are, I just think they're adorable. So those are going down on top. Now, back to the additives. Here is my goat milk. And that's gonna go right into the oils. Milk in oil method is what this is called. Uh, you can also, if you don't wanna do a full milk, of course, full milk is when you add the lye to the milk solution, and that's a whole different ball of wax. But if you can also add your milk after you've added your lye and you come up to a thin trace. So you can do that also, but I like the milk and oil method. So there it is. Here is my colloidal oats and my kale and clay as per my usual, two tablespoons of each. And these containers are from Dollar General and they came with the scoop in there. They're over by like their food storage containers and I just love them. They were very inexpensive. So Dollar General is where I got those. Let's get this all blended in and uh, we'll come on back and get ready to make some soap. back and it's time to make soap. Here is my lye solution that has cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate. And we're gonna add this in here and get up to emulsion and get our colors. I have my fragrance off to the side since I have not um, soaked with this before and I couldn't find any good reviews on this soap or this fragrance's behavior. So it is off to the side and I'm proceeding, you know, cautiously because it's the unknown factor that can get you in trouble. So see this light beige? You're gonna watch this turn into a darker beige color as the lye caramelizes with the goat milk. It's a beautiful thing that happens. Uh, if you left this uncolored and just poured it in the mold right now, it would bounce back to a very ivory white color. It doesn't stay this color after saponification, but so that's just the lye reaction, which I love. So we're going for emulsion here. Not too much blending, just a little. All right, let's get our colors blended up and get that fragrance in here.
it's the next day. It's been about 24 hours, and look at that. I just think these colors are beautiful. And I did not come in and steam the top, so it's a little bit dull or just not glossy, but I kind of think it goes along with the theme of this. And I'm so excited to get in here and see how these swirls, because I'm loving the colors. And now my big challenge is gonna be slicing and not knocking off my little pine cones. But let's get in here and see how those swirls came out. We're back with the lovely Olga and it's time to cut into our first loaf and attempt to get the wires down in between those sweet little pine cones because they're so cute. I'm really hoping I don't lop anybody off here. I'm going to try real hard. <laughs> we shall see. I think we're going to, I think we're going to get it. Let's just go for it here. Yay. We made it past the pine cones. All right, let me get the ends off. Oh, these colors. Look at that swirl. And this is the Trial by Fire Nurture Soap. I tell you what, you cannot beat that red. It's gorgeous. Oh my goodness, and the little pine cone. I love it. All right, let's look at the rest of these swirls. And I do have a feeling we're gonna have some soapy patterns at the end. Ooh, that one came really close, but we got it. I'm so excited. Oh my word. So cute. And this color combo. I'm loving it. Winter Woods. It's a good fragrance. It behaved really well. It smells really nice. I'm just so tickled with these. All right, let's do... Got to do a little preview here. Let's see if we have a soapy swirl. Oh, it's pretty. All right, let's keep going. Time for the next loaf here. And I'm gonna see if I can line up the wires with it laying on its side. If I can't, I'll go ahead and flip it off, but let's give this a try. I think I have a pretty good idea if I'm gonna be making it through looking pretty good right there oh yay all right we made it through loaf number two. Oh my word these these swirls you guys look at that they're making me so happy there's just something about red and black that's such a pretty combination sometimes you just have these color combos that are just really show stoppers and i think this is one of them Super thrilled with this. This was a fun loaf to do. And again, you know, I have talked about this before, uh, putting non-soapy items on top of soap, and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. Typically, I don't like to do non-soapy items, but once in a while, the theme just kind of speaks for it. Like I did an orange clove soap with orange slices, and I think these little conifer... Uh, pine cones really kind of go along with the winter woods theme and it's just one little pine cone so it's not like you have a whole bunch of botanicals floating off in your soap bar but I don't know let me know what you all think about I've, we've had this discussion before here on my channel but I'm still curious how do you feel about non soapy items on top of your soap I really have mixed feelings about it <laughs> all right these are gorgeous. Let's keep cutting. Okay, here's the final loaf. All right, I think we're good. Oh, wow, we made it. All the loaves came out and we didn't knock any pine cones off. I'm very happy. Well, that's kind of cute looking. All right, well, I am going to, like I normally do, let these sit for several hours before I come in and bevel and stamp. 
what that does is it just allows the surface area to kind of dry out and um, it makes it a little bit firmer, just giving it a little bit more time before I come in. Stamping's kind of an aggressive thing. I know some people do not bevel and stamp their soaps until after the cure, and that's fine too. I like to do it, you know, the same day because, I don't know, that's just how I roll. But I do like to give it a couple of hours before I come in and do all of that. So... I do want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be with me and watch the videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. It's so awesome and it really helps my algorithm when you comment and we can engage and talk through YouTube. All that stuff helps. I don't understand the algorithm universe, but I know that those things help. So thank you so much and I hope that you have a wonderful day.